Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Angela Brennan and today I'm bringing you a rather long video on stenciling techniques. I recently did my AECP level 3 workshop on this and I decided to do a video on all the various techniques I tried. I have a lot of information on all the techniques I tried step by step as well as all the products used in my blog and the link to my blog is in the description below. I really really hope you find new ways to use your stencils by watching this video. I have been away for a little while. I've um, lost a dear friend recently and really didn't feel like editing any videos but I finally got around to it and will be putting out videos at least on a weekly basis. In this video I show you how I use stencils to emboss, to use embossing paste, to do ink blending, to do shifting, emboss resist, many techniques. Do I, I really urge you to head over to my blog to check out all the additional photos as well as products that I've used. In this video I really show you how I do the techniques. I don't show you how I convert it to cards. So all the extra bits that I use for the cards are in my blog. I really do hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And when you do subscribe, remember to press the notification bell so you're alerted when a new video is uploaded. I'm going to leave you with some music now and I'll catch you later.
When I decided to do stenciling techniques for my Alta New Educator Certification Program final workshop, I started looking at various ways I can use it. As there's so many ways you can use stencils and I like that because you can obtain stencils at a lower price point. And so I experimented with a lot of different ways of using it, hence this long video. There's more ways and I'll show it in subsequent videos, but I thought I didn't want the video to get any longer. And in fact, some of those techniques I did, I deleted it because I didn't want to have a part one and part two, but I will start showing separate cards with different ways you can use stencils. I've got so many stencils that I've accumulated over the years and I'm going to start using them in various videos. And I hope you will join me in that journey to see how you can use your stencils in many, many ways. And what I find with doing stenciling, the key thing is if you if you can get it, get the Wendy Wetchy Make Art Station. It's a basically a magnetic base with four magnets and keeps your stencil and card in place. I find that really useful so you don't have to use a gazillion post-its, etc. However, if you don't have that, you can still use your low-tech masking tape and post-its to get your stenciling done. There's so many ways to do it. I find that as well as your large blending two blending brush, small blending brush, mini blending brush and detail blending brush quite essential to do stenciling. And for each of these blending brushes, I only have a brush for each color family and you just need to clean it on a scrap piece of paper or a towel and you can use the next color. And the other thing with stencils, depending on the stencil, for the more intricate stencils, you'll need to use a repositional adhesive like a pixie spray. And this lasts for a little while. It lasts over a few usages. And for example, the leaf bed stencil as well as a narrow brick stencil i did not spray use the pixie spray specifically for these projects but i used it previously and i kept it in the packaging and when i took it out this time around the adhesive was still there and i just used it as is but some of the other stencils like the bubble wrap stencil and the fine tool stencil i did not need pixie spray on the back of the stencil in order to use it there's many types of stenciling. You've got your layered stenciling, your shifter stencil stenciling. You can move around the stencils that you have. So there's many different mediums that you can use. There's so many ways you can use a stencil and it's hard to cram it all into one video. So over the next few weeks, months, I will be using various different stencils. I've also joined a couple of challenges and I'm on the design team and these are all online stuff which I can do. So I'll be doing quite a few videos on those as well. I enjoy challenges. It just takes me out of my comfort zone and makes me do different things that are based on a particular challenge. So you'll see those videos coming along as well. I urge you to take part in challenges as well. What it does, it gets you out of your comfort zone. It allows you to use a lot of products in your craft stash that you have not used before. And this is especially true for the canvas card challenge. For example, the reason I got into it is because I've got a whole load of pattern paper, which I did not use and did not find a reason to use it. It's really silly. I buy this pattern paper and I think, oh my goodness, if I use it, it's gone. But that's why I bought it, to use it. But with Canvas Card Challenge, it's all about using patterned paper, cutting it in various ways and creating 15 to 17 cards. And you have it there and you can put any sentiment on it. And voila, you have cards available to give out. And the good thing about it is you can do it in any theme that you want. Any, For example, you can use Christmas pattern paper, you can ease, ease the pattern paper, you can use Valentine's pattern paper, you can use Happy Birthday pattern paper. It's really up to you. So do check it out. I've got information of that in my blog and I've got various videos on it as well. If you want to try something new this year, if you want to try to use all different products in your craft stash and you want to get out of your comfort zone as it, a little bit, try it because the Kendra's Card Challenge is a quarterly challenge. So you literally got three months to, to take part. I'm also part of a Christmas creations design team. So what this does is we make a Christmas card every month. It's never too early to start a Christmas card. And they give you a theme. So it's either gnomes or trees or not a card, which means you can make tags or bookmarks, whatever. I like, I like making Christmas cards and the fact that I can make it all year through, it's pretty amazing. And finally, the last 
design team I'm on is something called the craft challenge and they do card they do a challenge three times a month and they give you a theme so it can be being inspired by a song it's, sometimes they do Christmas it can be anything goes so a lot of these things is it takes me out of my comfort zone it makes me think of something different it gives me ideas of cards to create as well as videos to post and different techniques to try and that's quite important I would urge you this year it doesn't have to be these challenges but go out and look at challenges that inspire you challenges that will make you use your products in different ways try different techniques make that something you want to do this year I know we all have loads of products lying around because we like getting products that look quite intriguing and interesting but we don't really use it sometimes so why not try using them all this year and make a pact with yourself I'm not going to buy any new craft products until I use X number of products in challenges or in different ways, different techniques. I think that's something that you should try and do every so often. But I do urge you for all the videos that I put out, check out the details in my blog. Because I tend to put more pictures, details of how I techniques of how I do certain cards, so the techniques involved, as well as links to everything that I've used. Now, not all the links are affiliate links, but some of them are. And what that does is it helps me keep the information and techniques that I show free content for everyone to learn and use. So all it does is supports my program and supports my YouTube channel at no extra cost to yourself. But that's one other thing I want to start doing. I have been contributing to the Cut for Kindness drive in the US for a few years now. But it's quite expensive to get my cards over to the US in Arizona. So I'm thinking of starting a Cut for Kindness drive in the UK and I would call it Spreading Handmade Cheer. What this does is it allows us to give all the cards we make and we make loads of cards, the excess cards we have to persons who would like to receive a handmade card and certain organizations such as hospitals, hospices, care homes, special rehabs, all the people in this establishment would love to receive a handmade card and they don't sometimes. And I especially realized this when I started sending out cards to people I know family, friends around the world during the pandemic. And I realized how much they appreciated receiving a handmade card. And the, the responses I got via email and WhatsApp messages was really, truly wonderful to, to get that feedback. And thank you to all of you who, who responded in that manner. And that's how I got to start thinking about starting something in the UK. Why not? It, you know, we've got so many wonderful crafters in the UK. And if we start spreading handmade cheer drive via cards that we make, why not? So I'm looking to do that. And I'm just wondering if you could let me know in the comments if any of you in the UK are interested. And if I do start this, I will need some support in getting all of this organized and see what's the best way to schedule our time to do this. I think it's a very good cause. It's entirely voluntarily. It's our way of giving back to the community from a hobby that gives us so much joy. I'd really love to hear what you have to say. Leave your thoughts in the comments below and I will get back to you. I hope you haven't minded me prattling on of all my challenges and what I aim to do this year. My spreading handmade shared card drive that I want to start. I just wanted to do something new this year something that I can give back to the community. And I just wanted to challenge myself a bit more in the crafting arena as well. Now let's get back to some of this card making here using stencils. Again, as I said, please go to my blog. I've got a step-by-step -step instruction on how I created all of these cards, which means I have the technique explained there as well. So you can use that as a reference if you want to try out any of these techniques and replicate any of these cards.
Here are the completed cards. Many, many cards for various techniques. Here's a card which has not been embossed using the leaf bed stencil. And here's one that's been dry embossed using the leaf bed stencil. And then here are a couple of cards, again, embossed with different variations. And I love the tiny sentiments, wishing and hello that I've used. And this one, another leaf bed stencil with a shifting technique. And here I use the embossing paste and the Be Kind die set. And here I use the Well Read stamp, sentiment stem, with the embossing paste that's been heat embossed with the heat tool. So it's got a mixed media look to it. I stamped the background with the script stamp first and then embossed it with or stamped it with the stencil with clear embossing powder and then eat embossed it with some and then what and water colored it create that look and the next one i did watercolor card heat embossed it stamped it with stencil heat embossed it clear embossing powder and colored water colored the leaves with various greens from the artist 24 pan set here you saw these cards using the lacy tile where I embossed and then ink blended. I love how these cards turned out. And here I used the ink on the stencil to do a poor watercolor look. So I stamped the watercolor by spritzing some water on it. This one, I used the same technique, but I did some additional ink blending on it after embossing. Embossing it and using different colors, more muted colors here. Here I embossed it and then did a really light blend of rouge, I think it was, with my large blending tool when using the small blending tool in the centers. Here it's more of a debossed look, so you can see the difference between the embossed and debossed look with the stencil. So much you can do with these stencils. Here I embossed it. I stamped it with clear embossing powder and sprinkled embossing powder, silver and gold, and one I did with some watercolor a wash and one I did not and you can see the shine on it it looks amazing so you get the negative bit of the stencil here and I think it looks really amazing this is the modern circle stencil where I shift the stencil quite a few times and covered the entire card panel I did it by a six by six so I've got two cards with this and this is the second card I didn't want to waste the strip and I did it a card with some of the half tone stencils as well and did I cut the hello there multiple times to give it that look of additional dimension and this card this card I did embossed resist I really like how this card turned out I did three cards I think with this with the sweet stencil a sweet spring stencil I think it's called and I did one with a muted color and I used all of it, the sentiments from the well-read sentiment stamp set, which I absolutely adore. It's a sweet spring stencil and I absolutely adore how this all turned out with the well-read sentiment stamp set, which I like the sentiments from there. Again, this one is the bitterroot stencil, I think it is. And I love oh, the bitterroot flower stencil. It's a layered stencil. Same concept as how I did the sweet spring stencil, but this requires additional silhouette stencil elements to be inked and heat embossed. Some double stenciling with the bubble red stencil as well as the narrow brick stencil and some stamping with images from the Bass Villa stamp. And I use a couple of the sentiments in there from the sentiment strip sets two and three. Here again from the Bass Villa stamp, Vast filler stamp set and the bold stamp greeting stamp set as well. Some double stenciling looks quite amazing. It's amazing what you can get with this stencil. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And when you do subscribe, remember to press the notification bell so you're alerted when a new video is uploaded. Do remember to head over to my blog and the link to my blog is in the description below where you can see Many more pictures of the cards that I've created, a detailed instructions of all the cards that I've created and how you can recreate them with the various techniques as well as all the products that I've used in creating these cards. Happy crafting! 
I really hope to get your comments on what you think on the card challenges as well as the card for kindness drive that I'm proposing. Do leave your comments and I will reply to every comment so we can see how we can make this a more satisfying venture, satisfying hobby for all of us. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you at my next video. Take care.